well today we're going to talk about AFOs and we're going to talk about a double adjustable to start and then we're going to talk about some other AFOs. But to start the entire lecture we need to have a definition of some terms so that you understand what we're talking about. So first, as we all learned back in school, we have open kinetic chain when the leg's in the air and it's not touching the ground, and then we have closed kinetic chain. Everything we talk about today is going to be in closed kinetic chain. The reason is, is because once the foot is on the ground, the tibia will be moving over the foot and not the foot on the tibia. So we have to always, when we're talking orthotics and gait, we're talking closed kinetic chain. All right, so the double adjustable AFO. How does it work? Well, I don't know if you all had opportunity to play with this in school, but right now this double adjustable AFO has two ankle joints on it, this and this. And essentially it has these two channels, an anterior channel and a posterior channel. The channels have little screws in them, and you can't really see them here, but essentially in each one of these channels you have a little ball bearing, and you have a little screw on top, and a little pin that goes inside this channel. That's what's in the channel. Now, as you tighten or loosen this screw, right now I'm loosening it, and as I loosen the screw, this brace can move further and further forward into what we refer to as dorsiflexion. It is the tibia dorsiflexing on the foot or in relationship to the ground. So again, when I'm talking dorsiflexion, I'm talking the tibia in relationship to the ground. When I'm talking plantar flexion, I'm going to open this posterior channel up so that we can have some plantar flexion. I'm opening it up here. And you can see that now this brace has movement into plantar flexion and into dorsiflexion. So the beauty of this brace is you have all of this adjustability and you can stop this brace at any point in time. As I tighten down the anterior channel, now I'm tightening it, that's loosening it, I'm sorry. As I tighten it, you will see that it will slowly start bringing the brace back into a more upright position. So this is referred to as a dorsiflexion stop. As the brace moves forward, it runs into an anterior stop. That's referred to as a dorsiflexion stop. Okay? Now, let's do the converse of that. I'm going to open that channel back up so we're going to be pretty much free into dorsiflexion, you see. But now let's say I want a plantar flexion stop. I don't want the brace coming past neutral. So that's referred to as a plantar flexion stop. So again, this is terminology that we need to all have under our belts because when we talk about orthotics close kinetic chain, now this brace has been given a plantar flexion stop and it has open dorsiflexion to about 10 degrees. So the double adjustable AFO gives you all of that adjustability by virtue of just tightening or loosening these screws. So let's talk about why closed kinetic chain and what an AFO can do. A lot of people think the primary reason for an AFO is to hold the foot up during swing. But really, the AFO has so many more stance stability opportunities. So it's primarily a stance stability device, and secondarily, we get the benefit of holding the foot up while it's in swing. But the truth of the matter is, is it provides a dorsiflexion stop, it provides a plantar flexion stop, and it provides tibial stability if you have weight on the foot. And it's very important for you to understand that. Now, as I mentioned, you can open, I'm going to open this up right now. And as I open this up, there we go. Now we have it allowing this brace or patient that's in the brace to go into dorsiflexion, which then if we look further up the chain causes the knee to do what? The knee goes forward and most likely you're going to see knee flexion with this position, correct? So forward and then 
the patient still has to be upright, so they're going to be in knee flexion here. Conversely, if I put this in more, you see, if I don't want to have a patient thrust, if I want to slow, a, let's say the patient's thrusting backwards, I can control that by not allowing this tibia to snap back, by putting them in more dorsiflexion, per se. Again, close kinetic chain references. So by locking down this posterior channel, I can put somebody in a lot of dorsiflexion and keep them there, and then they would thrust against the back of this brace, and I could slow an extension thrust down. Obviously, how much adjustability you do there, you have some limits on that, but that's the beauty of this double adjustable ankle joint, is we have all of that adjustability. So now I'm gonna lock it back down in the front, and the other thing that you can add into one of these AFOs is not a pin in the back, but if I remove this screw completely, you can now add a spring, okay? So the spring looks like this, and by adding a spring into the posterior channel, I now created a spring-loaded or what we refer to as a dorsiflexion assist AFO. So let me just get that in there. It's going to take me just a second here. Get that lined up correctly. A little bit of a problem on this brace. Shoot. All right. Normally, if these are lined up correctly, it's not as much of a problem. Now, these braces are only adjustable if you actually have this tool, which is referred to as a ball driver. And that is a Allen wrench on the end of a screwdriver is what it is. All right, so now I've put that spring in the posterior channel. Now watch what happens. I'm going to open this up. Because usually we would put the spring in on both sides. So now it's spring-loaded. So what does that do? That lets that foot pop up during swing, but more importantly, what it allows is when we land on that heel, it allows this brace to go into some plantar flexion. And remember, in normal gait, we land on our heel, our foot plantar flexes, we go into a little bit of knee flexion, and then the body comes over the knee. So this simulates a little bit more normal gait pattern than a locked AFO, which I'll show you here in just a second. This is a locked standard PLSO, but this is a heavy duty AFO. It's not bending. I'm putting my foot leg here and I'm trying to push it and it's not bending. But you see when a patient lands on the heel of this, that's rigid and it creates what we refer to as a flexion moment at the knee. So picture that. You land on the outstretched knee and terminal swing on your heel, rotates forward and basically throwing the knee into flexion. That is actually a greater flexion demand than is normal in the gait cycle because the normal flexion moment is, is subdued by the plantar flexion at the ankle. So when we fix a problem with an AFO by locking an ankle, we've created another problem because now we've created a greater flexion moment. The amount of knee extension strength required to prevent that forward thrust and buckling forward is at least a four. And I'm not talking a, a flimsy four, I'm talking a real solid four out of five manual muscle test score. So keep in mind that by doing this, you created a problem further up the chain, so you want to be sure you have adequate quad strength to accept this. When you don't have adequate quad strength, the gait deviation that you see once you put them in an AFO like this is instead of landing on their heel, they land on foot flat. And the reason is, is because they can't accept that flexion moment in loading. So. Back to the double adjustable, 
This you can change. If a patient comes to you with one of these, which isn't as common anymore, these are very expensive, they're heavy, and, and they're kind of overkill on a lot of patients. So we're going to talk about some of the other alternatives that you will see out there and what you can do to fix them to create either more dorsiflexion or a plantar flexion stop. So now let's go back to this rigid poly AFO. This one you can see is set in just a little bit of plantar flexion. How do I know that? I always put the brace on the ground and then I take a goni or I eyeball it, but you can put a goniometer along there and up along the middle of the tibia and then you basically can see how much dorsiflexion it's in or not in, okay? So now let's say your patient's landing on this and they're continuing to hyperextend. You're seeing this extension thrust and this hyperextension and you're like, hmm, well, what do I need to do? Well, if you created a dorsiflexed tibia, which you could do with this AFO, because I could make the adjustments, but I can't do that to this. There's no, there's no joints here. So what could I do to that AFO? Where are my heel lifts? Hmm. Oh, here they are. So look at this. If I just take something and put it underneath this brace, look what it just did to this tibia in relationship to the ground. I actually tipped it forward and created some dorsiflexion. So as you can see, even though this brace was set in too much plantar flexion and what the patient actually needed, I can create an extension stop or plantar flexion stop by adding something as simple as a heel lift underneath the shoe, underneath the brace, not in the brace. Okay, because the relationship of the patient's ankle does not change. Now, another AFO you may see a lot of, especially on our CBA patients, is what we refer to as an open dorsiflexion AFO. You see, this can go into dorsiflexion forever. And that's okay, because a lot of our uh, patients with brain injuries or um, CBAs actually have plantar flexion tone. They are limited. They may have contractures. Uh, the problem with the brace like this is it limits somebody's ability to come to stand because it doesn't allow anterior tibial translation as we come to stand. This brace would. So there's a lot of benefits to this brace, but you have to have adequate plantar flexion strength or some type of contracture to be able to not allow the patient to continue to go this way. Now, if you look at the back of this brace, it has a little piece of plastic in it. It's referred to as a motion control limiter. It's a little piece and there's different sizes of these and they go right into this little wedge. You can talk to your orthotist to give you different sizes of these or sometimes I just take pennies in there. One, two, three pennies. The, the more space we have, I won't go back in, you see this isn't about neutral right now. If I put something else in there, now I can keep tipping that tibia forward and just by filling in that little wedge there, that little space, I can create more and more dorsiflexion and I can create more of a plantar flexion stop. So this brace has some um, adjustability to it that you can work with. Very appropriate, lightweight, easy to re-pull one of these if it doesn't fit. Many times you'll see an AFO with these joints kind of pre-molded but there's actually no joint in it. That means that that AFO is ready to accept a joint and you just need to call the orthotist to cut it and add those different motion control limiters. So you have some options there. Okay. Now, unfortunately for us, many of the AFOs that we have, this is a custom PLSO, but a lot of the braces, actually every single one of the braces you can get off of Patterson Medical is too flimsy. So see this, the only thing this brace is good for, this is me not even straining. This is supposed to hold up a man's body weight and he's collapsing into dorsiflexion because he has weak plantar flexors. This is not gonna hold him up. The only thing this is good for is to hold the foot up during swing. But remember, again, the primary reason we have this AFO is for tibial stability, primarily in the forward direction, somewhat in the posterior direction, this isn't going to do any of that. All this is going to create is an additional flexion moment when they land, which you may not want, and it's going to help hold the foot up. It may give them a little bit of resistance into 
dorsiflexion during the stance phase of gait, which sometimes is all the patient needs. Let's say their plantar flexion strength is not normal, but perhaps they can do five single leg heel raises. That kind of patient might do okay with this. So that's why we need to have some trial and error. So that's pretty what, much what I wanted to cover under AFOs. What it does to stance stability, how you can make some changes, very simple ones, to adjust an existing brace, and to understand the closed kinetic chain terminology that we're talking about when we're using orthotics.